start sir good afternoon my dear friends this is amit bhattacharya professor of english university of gorbongo welcoming you to this video upload in fact today i am going to read with you a poem by the major indian women poet writing in english kamla das i have taken this poem from the collected poems of kamla das volume 1 the page number is 97 the poem is the millennials at marine drive now before we read the millennia set marine drive together i must tell you something about this poem and the persistent figure of the poet's great grandmother who often records in her poetry as a shining beacon of this interested love and warmth of understanding and companionship in fact today i am going to deal with this poem in two parts and in my discussion for the sake of convenience i will discuss the poem in relevant section i have actually divided the poem into various sections and i will take the help of one of my students who will read out the relevant portions of the poem for the benefit of the listeners and the audience well the millennials at marine drive you know marine drive as you know is in bombay or today's mumbai and since kamaladas has stayed in mumbai for a long time she had often seen very rich persons in uh, marine drive who went to marine drive uh, at, uh, in the morning and and scattered grains for birds like bird, uh, doves uh, pigeons and this uh in an oblique manner gave the poet a hint to write this poem in this poem she has in a sustained manner compared a glorious past with an abject present female bonding and compulsory heterosexuality and these binaries not only give to the poem a great force and appeal but also help uh, help the poet in pointing out the sad plight of the woman person now let us discuss the text now and i will request my student to read the first portion of the poem yes sir 18 years have passed since my grandmother's death i wonder why the ache still persists was she buried bones and wall in the loose red soil of my heart okay so this section begins with a time marker 18 years have passed so obviously the poet is referring to the past and then the word she refers obviously to the grandmother figure who as i have already pointed out in kamla das's poetry often stands for 
disinterested love, warmth, and tutelary guardianship and protection. Now, the death of the grandmother has been a severe shock and loss for the woman persona because as she herself says, the egg still persists, which is not very common because even after 18 years have passed, the egg still persists. And this kind of uh, serious and long-standing grief may remind us of Tennyson's mourning for Arthur Henry Hallam. You remember in uh, 1833, Hallam died and the uh, In Memoriam was published in 1850. So, you see, the persona asks, she is uncertain, as if the buried bones of the grandmother actually were, bo were buried in the loose soil of her heart, the heart of the survivor. Here, the use of the word red gives to us an elemental image. So there is art and there is also other elements like water. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next section, please. Yes, sir. Well, through the sun singing day, all through the moon wailing night, I think of her, of the warmth that she took away, wrapped in funerary white, a fire that stayed lit white, her blood cooled, and there was no more of it for me. So, the one persona still persists in thinking of her dear grandmother. You see, all through the sun singing day, all through the moon wailing night. Usually moon is associated with love, moon is associated with beauty. Here, however, moon is associated with wailing and sun with singing. Why this contrast between the singing sun and the wailing moon? You know, this has to be contextualized in Kamala Das's poetry, often the night is associated with loveless loneliness and brutal sexuality. Kamala Das's poetic persona is actually a naive girl who longs for companionship, longs for love, longs for passion as well. It's not that she is free from desire. But in her case, as in the case of countless other women, the desire of the female is always ignored by the monstrous ego of the male. And that is why the sun singing day is contrasted with the moon wailing night. Okay, read the next line from this very section. Um, second. Uh, yes. All through the moon wailing all night. Through the, uh, yes, uh, I, I think of her, of the warmth that she took away. Wrapped in funerary I think voice. I think of her, the warmth that she has taken away. So, any thought of her is automatically automatically associated with the warmth that she could give, and with her death she has taken away. 
that is the loss okay go on a fire that stayed lit while her blood cooled and there was no more of again an elemental image you know the fire is there it stayed lit but her blood cooled because she was wrapped in funerary white she had crossed the boundary between life and death so left she had left that is the grandmother had left behind the mourning child the woman persona and there was nothing no warmth no understanding was left for the wailing woman persona yes go on um, there was no more of it for me mm. then next okay next 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 section please for no longer was there someone to put an arm around my shoulders without a purpose yes there was no one left who could give her love and warm physical touch this touch is to be compared with the carnal touch of the male lovers and the husband figure maybe in the later sections of the poem so this touch this companionship that this grandmother could give to the woman persona was without any purpose this interest and here we are reminded of what luisa muraro has talked about when she has enunciated the concept of affidamento affidamento a kind of a female bonding that cuts across barriers like age social status educational status financial status and intellectual status as well the bond that binds women across cultures across ages and across all other barriers he is often referred by the female poet kamala das over what is called heterosexual compulsory heterosexuality okay go on next section says yes all the hands the great brown thieving hands groped beneath my clothes their fire was that of an arsonist arsonist warmth was not their aim they burned my cities down yes now these hands of the male lovers they are called thieving hands great brown thieving hand brutal hand the mention of brown thieving great all these actually give to these hands gigantic proportions and they have been called arsonists they have kindled the fire of passion in the naive woman persona without giving the warmth of love and understanding and that is why they burned her cities down all her assets the human landscape is burned out destroyed so if the grandmother through heart touch could give warmth and life then these male figures the lover figures they through their touch defiled and desecrated desecrated the sacred longings of the woman speaker so i think this poem as i will continue to discuss in my later presentation 
gives us a picture of a very sad plight of the woman's persona. If the descendants and the old playhouse that I have discussed earlier in some of my previous video uploads, if these other poems have pointed out the sad flight of the woman in a patriarchal setup, be it in the case of the lover beloved relationship in the descendant and the strictly marital relationship in the old playhouse. Then again, the the ambit of this poem is vaguer and more generalized. I hope to continue this discussion. Thank you for watching.